are really good for mono types because they stay open. And what stay open means is that they don't dry unless they hit paper. Once you've completely submerged them, lift them up like this. Just let them drain for a little bit. Then you see them on the blotting paper here. Mm -hmm. Pop another one there. Then you stick that paper down, rub it down. So you, what I want is damp paper, I don't want really wet paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is lay down colour on the actual plate. As you can see I'm doing blended colour here just for the fun of it. So what I've done here is I've inked up For this type of printmaking, I'm trying to get um, I'm trying to get these to overlap there. Because instead of traditional post flyer, what I want to do is a really fun experiment where you end up with uh, first prints being sort of fairly ordinary, but then as you experiment and play around with it, they become more and more interesting. Um, can you put the blotting paper on top of those and just press them down? little mixture of snaky. <laughs> so I've inked the background, I've inked all the snakes, all different colours, I've just dropped them all on each other. <coughs> Shall we see what that print's like? So how many times would that ink last on there? What's how that? many prints would, would that amount of ink get? Just the one? You're about to find out. Oh, okay. So the first print. What I usually refer to as the boring print. There we go. That's taken off most of the background, but I'll have the background still underneath there. I'll lift these guys up. So much trouble wrangling snakes. <laughs> oh, so you're flipping them over. Yeah. That is going to look good with all those different colours on there. They're going to be cool, aren't they? Yeah, look at all that. Yeah. So you can see what's happened is they've picked up all the other colours from not only the background but the snakes underneath as well. Yep. So now we're going to have a real psychedelic looking print. This is the print we want. So another piece of paper. Like I say, it's usually about the second or the third print that's kind of cool.
So this is called a ghost print. When you take a print and you don't ink it up and you just go again, it's called the ghost print. <coughs> so that's Poshwa, just putting in colours. This is experimenting and exploring possibilities of just making a lot of strange experiments really. You've got to be part mad scientist when you do this. Okay, here we go. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Should get like a Jackson Pike or something. Right, here we go again. I'm surprised how much ink still stays on there. Yeah. Is that to do with the paper being damp as well, do you think? The paper being damp takes more ink off. Oh, does it? Um, if I don't dampen, in fact often I print the first one dry. And if you don't dampen, it will, um, yeah, it will make a much more, you get a lot more prints out of it. But I think I can easily get three prints out of this. And so this is sort of why it's called ghost prints, because you see getting these little echoes of what has gone before. And this the other thing about it, this ink's not drying. It doesn't dry on the plastic. Well it will, you know, if you give it six months or something like that. Um, so you wouldn't print this on smooth paper, you'd always print it on absorbent paper. And dampening the paper as that paper dries, the ink's going to dry because it's going to absorb the ink in. So some inks dry through evaporation, some inks dry through absorption. Did you print onto watercolour paper? Yeah, yeah, you can do. I have to set the press a little bit tighter just to press down into and flatten the grooves. Mm. The watercolour paper, if it's textured, it won't be after it goes through here, only the outside edge will be textured. Mm. Right, next sheet of paper. This one should be very interesting. It gets a little bit more abstract every time. So I've been doing this for about half an hour, I've got three prints already, it's a quick way to fill up a journal. Ooh, look at that one. Mm. Yeah, it does look most um, indigenous. It does a bit, doesn't it? Mm. Just completely by accident, but you know, that's what happens. Put that on there. I think we should go through one more time because we've got one more sheet of paper. Hmm. Let's see how it works. So, oh, look at that. Very subtle, isn't it? Lots of the intricate bits where the where it's sort of where the paint's gone, like yeah, bubbly. bubbles and sort yeah. of wriggles around, yeah. Now it's nothing to stop me letting that dry and pulling out some ink and just drawing over it, mm. and creating a hybrid between drawing and printmaking. <laughs> There's nothing to stop you ever adding paint to your prints. That's another way of getting colour on. So there are people who frown upon that kind of thing but there's always somebody who's going to break the rules. Mm -hmm. So... I can just picture that right now. I draw like a silhouette or a, or a silhouette landscape or something. Yeah. And you'd get well, if I had done... the sky out of it. 
If I had, instead of snakes, if I'd used leaves or fern shapes, I'd have a really nice background there, wouldn't I, just to draw something on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. And even so, if, like, I'm not overly impressed with that, but what I could do now is I could just drop another print right on top of it. I could get a lino cut, drop that on top of it, mm. and then it's just got this sort of soft, sort of, you know, warm colours coming through the background of the lino cut. So, yeah, it's, it's limited to how many combinations you can imagine.